Okay, let's go ahead and figure out the perimeter of this window. So we have the dimensions of this window. It's 48 and 1 half inches this way and 108 and 3 eighths inches this way. And this is a rectangular window. It's not some crazy looking window that's like this or like that. Not to judge these type of windows because I've seen homes with crazy looking windows and they actually look quite nice. But this is a nice, lovely rectangle. And that's important, uh, an important little detail in order for you to figure out this problem. Now, if you don't know what the perimeter is, I'm gonna, of course, answer that in a second. But if you know what the perimeter is, go ahead and put your answer uh, in the comment section. I would prefer that you work without a calculator, okay? But if you're like, ah, I wanna use my calculator, well, go ahead and put your decimal equivalent answer into the comment section as well. But uh, I'm gonna show you the correct answer in just one moment. And of course, I'm gonna go through this step by step. But uh, before we get going, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of TC Math Academy. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I've been teaching math for decades. I absolutely love teaching math. It's my true passion. I can tell you right now, all of you could be successful in math, and I'm especially speaking to those of you that struggle in math. Listen, if you failed a couple math courses in the past, it's not the end of the world. If you're struggling in math right now, you can turn it around. If you have the desire to learn math, what you need is encouragement and great math instruction, instruction that you actually understand, clear, comprehensive, and understandable. So if you need help in your current math course or maybe some sort of special test that you're getting ready for, something like the GED, SAT, ACT, um, ASVAB, maybe a teacher certification, uh, teacher certification exam, something with math on it, or if you're homeschooling mathematics, check out my math help program. I'm gonna leave a link to it in the description of this video. I literally have over 100 plus different math courses that span these categories and much, much more. I'm also gonna leave links to my uh, notes in the description as well, because you need something to study from. It's not like you can't learn math by like photographic memory. You're like, I don't need to take notes. I just remember everything. No, you have to take notes. And most students don't take adequate notes. So improve your note taking and everything will get much, much better. But in the meantime, you could use my notes. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into this problem. We're gonna figure out the perimeter of this window. So what is the answer? Well, here it is right here. The perimeter of the uh, of this window is 313 inches, uh, 313 and three fourths inches. So when we're talking about uh, units of measure, when you have like these two little quotes up there like that, that's inches if you have one that is feet, right? So like, uh, let's just do an example. There's 30 inches. That is 30 feet, just in case you were confused. But that is the answer. Okay, so how did you do? By the way, uh, this in terms of a decimal, you would get 313.75 inches. But again, uh, hopefully you didn't use your calculator, but that would be the decimal, decimal equivalent to this answer. But if you got this correct, well, let's go ahead and celebrate your awesomeness in terms of the perimeter by giving you a nice little happy face and A plus, a 100%, and a few stars so you can show off your awesome math skills to your friends today. Right? You can say, listen, I'm pretty awesome when it comes to the perimeter. So if you ever need you know, help with the perimeter, look me up and I'll be your math tutor. Anyway, so this is um, the correct answer. If you didn't get this answer correct, well, there's probably two reasons why. One, you made an error when you were actually calculating the perimeter, or two, you don't understand what the perimeter is. So let's go ahead and answer those questions right now. Okay, so what is the perimeter, okay? Well, here is our window, and it's, again, the dimensions here is 48 and one half inches this way, 108 and 3 eighths inches this way, but because it's a rectangle, this dimension and this dimension are the same, and this dimension and this dimension are the same. All these lengths here, opposite lengths, are equivalent. Well, the perimeter of any figure is the total distance around, okay? The total distance, we add up all the lengths of any figure, that is what we call the perimeter. So if I had some sort of figure like this, let's say I had something like so, and I had the lengths to this, if I, if I add it up here, 
add it up here, add this, add this, add this, add this, just add up all around all the sides of this figure. That is what the perimeter is. And you can find the perimeter of all sorts of objects. So this particular object happens to be a rectangle. All right, so what do we need to do in order to calculate the um, perimeter? Well, first we need to know what the perimeter is, right? An understanding of that, which I, of course I just explained. Now we need to be able to add, okay? And here we have the, um, you know, uh, lucky pleasure of adding fractions, which is gonna make this more exciting. So we're gonna have to add this, plus this, plus this, plus this. So let's go ahead and add this up. But let's do this in a kind of smart way. So we have a 40 and a half here and a 40 and a half here. So we'll add those up first. So we got a 40 and a half plus a 40 and a half. And then we'll add up these two sides. Remember, when it comes to addition of numbers, order doesn't make a difference, i.e. 1 plus 3 plus plus, I think I should write plus, 7 is the same thing as 3 plus 7 plus 1. Okay, so order doesn't make a difference when we're talking about addition. So I'm going to go ahead and write my um, uh, dimensions like so. This is how I'm going to set up the sum. So this is just one big number crunching math problem, okay? And of course, we're going to have to understand how to add fractions, but let's just try to be nice and efficient about this problem. And well, let's just break it up in parts. So when you're looking at this problem, always try to, you know, you know, look at the most kind of stream way or effective way you can do the problem. There's a number of different ways you can approach this problem. I'm going to show you the way that I'm going to uh, do it. But if you did this in a different way, as long as you got the answer uh, correct, that's perfectly fine. But here I have 40 and a half plus 40 and a half. I'm going to put these together because I, well, one half and a one half is going to be one. So I have a 48 here, a 48 there. I got a one half here and one half here. One half plus one half is one. But just to be very clear about this, 48 and one half, I could write this this way, 48 plus one half. Now we write it as a mixed number fraction this way, but 48 and one half is the same thing as 48 plus one half plus another 48 plus one half. Now our dimensions aren't given this way, but this is what this means. So this one half and one half is what? That's a one in 48 and 48 is 96. So 96 plus 1 is 97, and we're already halfway there. Okay, so now let's go ahead and focus on this part of the problem. We'll add up uh, the sum of 108 and 3 eighths plus 108 and 3 eighths, and then once we get that answer, we'll add it to our 97, and we'll, we, uh, we will be done. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into that part of the problem right now. Okay, so this time, Instead of uh, looking at this as 108 plus 108 plus 3 eighths plus 3 eighths, I'm going to uh, use multiplication. So I know I have two 108s. Again, um, I can think of this as 108 plus 3 eighths plus 108 plus 3 eighths, right? I can separate this mixed number fractions into fractions that look like this. So how many 108s do I have? Well, I have two. So I can take two and multiply it by 108. Then add that to how many 3 eighths do we have? Two. Okay, so two times 108 plus two times 3 eighths will get me the answer this way. Okay, so two times 108 is going to be 216. And then two times 3 eighths is what? Well, you got to know how to multiply fractions. It's not that difficult. So the, how do you multiply fractions? Well, you simply multiply the respective numerators and denominators. So two times three is six or six over eight, and I can reduce that fraction down into three fourths. Or you can just say, oh, two goes into eight, four, so that's three fourths. So uh, we're in, our um, final answer is 216 plus three fourths, and we have 97 here. So I just have to add up all three of these um, values right here, and we will get the perimeter. So let's go ahead and do that now. Okay, so again, our uh, 40 and a half plus 40 and one half was 97. And then we did uh, this part of the problem, the 108, uh, uh, 3 eighths plus 108 and 3 eighths. That's 216 plus 3 fourths. I'm gonna leave it like this because here I can just add 97 plus 216. I'm gonna get uh, 313 plus 3 fourths, right? I'm not gonna write my answer this way, uh, uh, 313 plus three fourths, I'm gonna write it this way, uh, three thirteen and three fourths inches. 
right? We are talking about length here. The perimeter, you do have to have the correct units of measure. So we are talking about inches, but this is how you do this problem. Now, this is the way I did this problem. You could have um, added up these fractions in a completely different way. As long as you got the correct answer, that's what counts, okay? But when you're dealing with fractions or you're dealing with adding up a bunch of numbers, you always want to look for opportunities to kind of organize uh, the values in your sum, okay, to make things nice and easy. So this is the way I kind of um, set up the problem. But again, right, if you did this in a different way, as long as you got the correct answer, that's what counts. Okay, so if you need help with basic geometry concepts like perimeter, maybe surface area, volume, area, a couple of suggestions. One, I have a great course, my pre-algebra course. I go through all this stuff. I go through surface area uh, and the like, but probably uh, for perimeter, I believe I teach this in my math foundations course as well. I'm almost certain of that because a perimeter is a kind of more uh, basic concept. So check out my math foundations course or my pre-algebra course uh, if you want to know more about perimeter and just basic geometry, okay? Because that's what kind of perimeter is about. And I also have additional videos on my YouTube channel as well. But if this particular video helped you out, if it was interesting to even the smallest little degree, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.